have it, 12. I cannot Sardis, believe what I'm goes. seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hashling and Elferkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lowe. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans, and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts, and we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. And subscribe Ulti TV, there's lots of the videos, posting, everything, check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ulti TV. Regardez Ulti TV. Deviens un membre de Ulti TV. Et fais grandir ta communauté. Top Ulti TV. Salme et roginkime Ultimate of Andromeda. Si quieres ayudar a Ulti TV, puedes ser miembro de Ulti TV. Thumbs up for Ulti TV. Everyone, follow Ulti.tv on Instagram, on YouTube. They've got everything. Best like, content. Like their pictures if you love frisbee, just do it. We're counting on you. Leave me a love for Ulti TV. Became member of Ulti TV. TV. Woo! <laughs> Mamma mia. Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. friends and family, Ultimate France worldwide. The joint junior ultimate championship is underway in Wrocław, Poland. We have another game getting ready for you, fresh on the stream on the Alti TV YouTube channel, this time from the U17 division, meaning the European Youth Ultimate Championship. We have Belgium taking on Austria in the mixed division. My name is Rachel Doshnerova and I'm joined by Benji Rees as Austria prepare to receive their first pull? Well, they prepare to, but they're not going to because it lands out of bounds. So they get the opportunity to bring it in from the brick mark. Both of these teams played this morning and uh, didn't necessarily go that well for either side. I'll give you more on that after this first point. Here is the Austrian offense immediately swinging the disc wide against the Belgian zone. So far, no stressing about. We see two women, two men, or shall I say boys and girls in this junior division. Wall of Belgians in front of them, causing no trouble so far, besides preventing any continuation passes downfield. On the sideline is Nils Brown, who goes to his teammate, Fridolin Justich. 
game stoppage. I believe on a potential down call, but Eustich will continue. Lea Dietrich gives the disc back to him. They carry on with the swinging. Still no continuation. This isn't the first time we've seen this actually in this tournament. Teams happy to swing laterally, but they're not really getting the connectivity between the handlers and the players downfield. That one pass was a bit too far from my, uh, for Meister. So Belgians with a chance to break early. Here is Fres with the disc. Lefty backhand in the middle. They continue on sideways, nearing the end zone slowly but surely. And here's the huge blade. Defense is underneath, won't be collected, but a courageous put nonetheless. I mean, I love the spice, don't get me wrong, but why? I mean, he was just going over the head of the defender. I, I saw what he saw. It just went a bit higher and took a bit longer to land than he expected, I think. I would admit I didn't see what he saw because the sideline was in the way, but... That might be the story of these U17 games. And Belgians get the disc back and this time they pop it in. They start off this game with a break for Belgium going up 1-0. And it's Emma Dismet, the birthday girl. Celebrating her 16th today. And Marie Romelard will be pleased to see Belgium score as she tunes in as the first one in the chat on the YouTube channel. She says it's nice to watch the championship with her grandson playing for Belgium. Very she keeps exciting. her fingers crossed and knows that all players are great. Gatti Meisel, the now almost long time Yaka player, uh, featured on Yaka at WCC, is also tuning in for Belgium. So excited to follow them, as well as, of course, her native Austrian teams from afar this week. Yeah, I love seeing the outpouring of love and support that's, that's kept me from around Europe and around the globe as well. If you want to add to the comments in the YouTube section, make sure to hit the subscribe button, which will allow you to post and show your support for these young athletes. Some of them making the world stage for the first time, as I believe it will be the case for these U17 teams. We've mentioned this before, Given the three-year break that we've had due to COVID, none of the teams competing in the U20, none of the people competing in the U20 um, category previously are able to participate this year, which means that all of the players in the U20 division, if they have had an appearance previously, it would have been in the U17 one. Yeah, and that's something that you always look out for at these youth championships, is seeing players make their way up through the age brackets and seeing them improve as they go. Centering to Furlan is Austria. Sideways to hop for Visa. Furlan has it again. Hochmeier, high disc, collected safely, two handed grab. Belgians with the zone once more. Furlan stretches out her arm. It's, it's very composed at the back but they're just not really finding those downfield connections. That one is a spicy look down the sideline. Great, that's well reeled in. Great put from Hopfavisa. Austria now way closer to the end zone and they do make it in. Nice upline continuation. First score for Austria. Yeah, it's good for both sides to get on the board early. We mentioned that both sides uh, played one game already today. Uh, both sides uh, coming out on the losing side of that. For the Austrians, they played Poland first game and uh, yeah, were 4 nil down before they kind of, before they were able to get a point on the board. They were able to fight back a little bit, but actually in the end, Poland were too far out in front, emerged 12-7 winners in getting a Callahan along the way as well. For Belgium, they had a slightly slow start against, uh, against Hungary. They were down 6-2 and 8-3 down at half. The second half was uh, was a lot closer. Uh, final score 13-7.
So I think for both sides, the, the aim is, you know, we didn't, we, sure we didn't get the result that they wanted, but building on what they saw, improving throughout the game and throughout the tournament. And just to make sure not to miss any shout outs, that was Konstantin Podstatsky with the assist for the last point. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch the score as the Austrian sideline is slightly in the way of our commentator view. And the sideline really full here at the fields of Wroclaw. We have lots of Belgians, fa Belgian fans being very active also in the last stream game where we saw the U17 women's squad featured for the first time on the world stage. Yeah, struggled against, against Italy, but again, things to build on. This pole lands on the grass, will be picked up by Belgium. Fanquali finds the upline in the hands of Dalla. Wow. Great grab by Vanquali. Good continuation. Onchnat continues upline. And that's a lovely grab, just shy of the end zone. Big backhand, and the win takes it away. It's not out. Just not able to get that connection there in the end zone. Feels such a shame after Fan Quali made that superb layout and a turnover on the first pass from Austria. One more chance for Belgium, but the disc gets smacked to the ground by Austrian offense. I believe that was Nils Brown. They think about the deep putt, but decide to activate the handler instead. But the wind blows that to the ground. Mia Meister couldn't, didn't really have a chance to make a play on that disc. One more time, Van Quali looking for options. He's going upwind, he gets it off. Andrian with a quick continuation. The disc is tipped, second effort. I think it was Vertogen who tried to read that disc one more time, but it landed on the ground. One more chance for Austria. The disc is wobbled as the wind is really picking up on these fields. We've had lovely weather so far. Sun was out on all of these games, but the wind complicating things, especially for these skinny, skinny arms of the U17 players. Yeah, one of the things is obviously their, their skill sets are still developing and you know they're also still developing both as people, mentally and physically as well. Andrian, high disc. Collected. They continue to Fertogen. Now they get a gainer, Vanesta. Good dump and swing action. Incredibly athletic grab by Belgium. Andrian getting horizontal. One more continuation into the end zone. That's a score. Sideline going nuts. Belgium with an offensive hold going up 2-1. A couple of crazy athletic bids there from Belgium. First from Van Quali and then from Andrea. They may, uh, they may speak different languages, but they're on the same, but they seem to be reading from the same book. <laughs> Here's the first one, Van Quali with a left hand. And then this one, another left-handed snag, full extension layout from Andrea. And you look, get a chance to see it again as well. Tell you what, those are just such good form on those layouts. Well, I know what they've been watching a, a week or two ago. <laughs> yeah, it's been a bumper summer of Ultimate and uh, Long may it continue as it is here on the fields of Wroclaw. And another point coming up your way. This time it's Belgium pulling. 
Austrians trying to get their second goal of the game on the board. And this one is a perfect floaty thing, getting defense lots of time to get there. Furlan finds an athletic grab by Palinkas. Panaman's trying to make a real nuisance of himself on the mark, and he very nearly got there, but they're able to thread that needle. Hochmeyer looking for the break side, finds Hopfavisa. Furlan with a shoulder fake. Oh, and here is almost a D. Quite appropriately for a player with the first name Wolf, Panamans is really hunting for that block. And he gets it. Belgium moving quickly towards the end zone. They're now looking for the reset. Panamans. Lefty backhand into the end zone, overshot. Second chance for Austria. The zone defense of the Belgians really slowing Australian offense down. Austrian. Austrian. <laughs> Australians not present at this JJUC championship. Yeah, they're probably the, the, the most notable of, it, of the absences, although as this is under 17s and it's Euros, for them, they wouldn't have been eligible to play here anyway. Expansive shot from Palinkas is brought down very nicely by Hochmeyer. They keep swinging it around the cup. Contact on the disc. <laughs> and Falan's taking the time out. <laughs> it was a bit unclear what was happening there. The players fighting for the disc, but it was just to signal the timeout. Yeah, Panamans was just, just trying to say, trying to coax <laughs> the more the more visible timeout signal out of her in the end. And you can tell that the Austrians, you know, they're moving the disc between the handlers nicely, but they're not. They're not getting that link up with the with the players slightly further downfield. Not a bad call out of Austria trying to figure out this Belgian defense before it's too late. They will be continuing to go upwind after a short break. We will now leave you a message with a short message from our sponsors. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, or drop a like to help spread Ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, back to you. He's in a great spot. Now. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh. That was a huge play, but we have seen face. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it. Do you think there's a particular reason why we chose to play the Finney ad? Um, could be, but unfortunately, none of these teams are currently watching our stream because they're enjoying this action live. <laughs> it is the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. EYUC European Youth Ultimate Championship action here in the under-17 mixed division. Austria taking a timeout with the disc against Belgium, down 2-1. Austria has have just taken a timeout, struggling a tiny bit to gain some meters against this Belgian zone. Maybe a quick discussion with their coach how to approach this best. There is different gusts of wind, different intensity coming more from the right side of the camera, but also kind of towards it. Furlan picks up. Goes backwards to Hop for Visa. Hop for Visa. Saw the shot. It was great, but a bit too far for Palinkas. And the Belgians with a chance to score. Having to get a bit more creative and tricksy with some of those throws. And we see Panemans really taking a deep breath before picking up that disc, knowing that this might be crucial for Belgium. They get it in front of the end zone. One more shot, that's there. And that's a score and a break for Belgium in the hands of... I think it's uh, Van Herle with the goal in the end. Van Herle with the score. So Belgium breaking again, taking a 3-2 lead. 
putting a little bit of separation between themselves and their Austrian opponents. They were very calm after the turn here. This you could say was maybe a little bit dicey, this throw from Moulion, looking for Hoffman. But uh, if you're going to put a throw slightly aerial, I think Hoffman's the player you'd want to, the target you'd want to pick for that. I agree. Hoffman, I believe, one of the German pickups on this team. I thought I, thought I saw a little um, German flag next to his name in I our system. I believe you. <laughs> but we always love to double check. If you know Hoffman, please let us know in the comments. So 3-1, Belgium scoring two breaks in this game already. Austria will now be going downwind, so slightly better chance to get the score. With this amount of wind, it is actually quite easy to get two breaks in a row if the first one um, you manage to score upwind. Yeah, that's the important thing. If you do get that score against the wind, make it count by putting in the subsequent downwind point. Good pull from Belgium to start there. Here are the mixed Austrian handlers, Mia Meister. Examining the options. Nice pop to Justich. Justich puts up a deep shot and sailing out of bounds. No chance for Lukas Schuster to get there on time. Yeah, he did the right thing. He was tracking it all the way down the sideline just in case it picks up a gust or it blows back into the field of play but didn't get a shot at that one at all. And now Belgium can try their luck against this wind and the tight Austrian defense. Van Quali gets it off to Kleis. Kleis tries one more upline, but that's well defended. Meister picks up immediately, centers to Justich. No options for the undercuts. Meister has it again. She is calling for her teammates to come closer. Yeah, it's tricky sometimes when you take those resets. You need to make sure that the players downfield are, play, uh, are not taking advantage. They're, they're aware of it because otherwise you get a situation where the stack's just advancing down the field and the handlers are going the other way. Big gainer and a continuation deep shot from Daria Sheruga. And that was a lovely forehand put. There were three receivers striking deep. It's Schuster in the end who makes the catch to bring Austria back within one. So not a clean offensive hold, but they bring it in. Let's see that one more time on the replay. This was the difficult dump, almost a miscommunication, but it worked. She winds up, it's perfect, it's flat. And an easy score for Lukas Schuster. Yeah, although if he hadn't got it, I think Fischer might well have done. The thing that's always interesting to me is when you see, uh, obviously you see a lot of parents on the sidelines and family members and, you know, you see names that you recognize and there are some times when you, you don't even need to know the player's name because you just see the resemblance right there. It's, they're instantly recognizable. Some of them yet less so. The point I'm trying to get to here is Van Quali. His, uh, his dad's a really prominent figure in the Belgian ultimate scene. Played, for, played with Gentle for many years. And uh, Ramon does not look like his dad because he does not have a great big bushy beard. <laughs> but maybe in time we'll get there. In any case, on the Belgian side, we hear a mix of French and Flemish, both on the sideline and on the field. Love to see different speaking uh, na nations with more than one official language. Let's let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, crossing the language barriers. <laughs> crossing the language barriers on the field. Uh, we have a similar situation in Switzerland, of course, and I'm sure we would maybe find another, at least another one participating country that is tackling that same issue. Or shall I, shall I, shall I, shall I say advantage? Hey, the, the, to be fair, so there are sometimes I think the language we speak in the south of England is nothing like the language they speak <laughs> in the north. Here's Belgium. Back on O. 
High release, well read and brought in by Anchenat. Anchenat. Uh, but it seems like a stall out. It was a stall out, but there was also stopping for a little bit just to get the disc from the uh, from the far field back in play. Van Quali accepts it. And here is Hochmeyer. Gets the reset. Podstatsky swings. Hochmeyer oh, still has it again. Big pivot and great catch under pressure. Good layout defensive effort. Furlan wobbles the disc. It ends up on the ground. Panquali. It's going to be a good matchup, I have a feeling, with Hochmeister throughout the rest of the game. Panquali puts up a ripper of a forehand with a layout save. That's Mir Carney. Knocking on the doorstep and she finds her teammate with a short forehand for the score. Belgium go up 4-2. This Belgian team is not shy of big plays. And if you look at the way that some of their uh, some of the rising stars of Belgium ultimate play slightly up the age brackets, you're thinking about the uh, the the two sets of brothers, the Yonkers and the Declans, then you know what? It tracks. That was Anjanat with the score for Belgium, keeping the nice buffer that they managed to create. Great layout save. I think that's uh, Van Lanka going to ground to make sure that she secures possession and then just a simple pop off for the goal. 4 2 Belgium lead. And yeah, they are. Uh, and if there's the, there is always, with the Belgians, the threat of the deep shot with them. It uh, makes it interesting to watch, I think. Very much agreed. We've seen some wonderful deep shot in the opening game, both out of Poland and GB. And the Italian U17 women's team weren't quite shy of them either. No, it's nice to see that teams aren't afraid to, to cut loose sometimes and yeah, really out there enjoying their ultimate. So 4-2, currently the score in this mixed junior game as the pull from Belgium sails out of bounds. Yeah, they've, not for the first time this game. They've got distance on it, but again, the wind pushing it out of this near sideline, something they need to compensate for. We are in danger here in the commentary and production booth with the poles sailing out of bounds towards where we're sitting or standing. Oh, and an overthrow on the reset. Trying to find Meister in that dump set, but not on the same page. Belgium with a chance for another break. Bannemans puts up a huge backhand into the end zone and a bit of a collision of the players. I don't know if this affected or not. It looks like they're going to talk about it, which is always the right thing to do. If you're not sure, have the discussion. We'll see it once more in slow motion. My, in, my gut instinct is that the disc was probably trailing over their heads and not necessarily catchable although you never you never quite know uh, uh the the range and athleticism of these athletes and they are going to say that the turnover stands Marcelis accepting the perspectives of her teammates and the austrians bring it to the front of the end zone meister working deep in her own end zone with the rest of the Austrian handlers. They try to squeeze it through, but not too many options. Everyone just standing behind the first cup where it's very difficult to hit people. They try to take it around, Nils Brown. It's all, it's all very static for the Austrians. I'd like to see a bit more movement and motion out of, the, out of their players. 
Meister doing a little bit of running now. Lea Dietrich there too, but here's a layout D by the Belgians. They just need one well-prepared and executed set play to add another break. Panamans absolutely loves being that monster on the force in that zone. High release oh. backhand. Knocked away by Austrian defense. They were looking to get Panamans the double happiness, but there's just enough pressure underneath that. So one more chance for Austria to learn how to work around the Belgian zone. Oh, and that's a really nice put. That was good ice, but the I don't think she intended for the disc to go straight. I think she was trying to put a bit of an OI spin on that, but at least the Belgians need to go through the last third of the field. Panemans, lefty slice, but two players attacking the same space and Nils Brown says no. You see there what the issue is when two players cut to that same space. One of them realizes and pulls out, but the defender sees that the disc is going to go regardless and sits there and just slaps it away. Meister gets open for the backwards cut. Moving sideways, Dietrich over the heads of the first cup. That was finally the options we were option we were looking for. Brown looking for Rinneberger, but instead goes backwards one once more. Rinneberger with a visionary shot, but again a bit out of reach. Hoffman denies it, smacks it out of bounds. And it's, it's an authoritative smack there from Hoffman. It felt like he was taking a little bit of aggression on that disc. So Panemans to pick up once more. Belgian, front of the stack cut. Desmet gets a continuation. Ameo keeps his feet in. Centers to Fres. Fres with a lefty forehand, but that one goes D maybe. Yeah, it was a little bit behind Hoffman, and it meant the defender Heitzinger was close enough to put pressure on. Big shot, Hoffman with a height advantage. Keeps his positioning. But I don't think this is a bad idea by the Austrians really trying to maybe make the Belgians work a bit harder, maybe opting for a bit of a huck and D. Yeah, it's, I mean, you always want to try and find the big play, but when Hoffman's patrolling deep, it's uh, yeah, tricky to bring down. Here is Belgium one more time. Defense way closer to the Austrian end zone. This is, I think, what they were exactly going for. Maista wipes off her hand to make sure the disc is not slippery. She bounces it off the other player, but that one is just, again, a bit too far. It's in that horrible no man's land where it's not quite far enough to run down, but it's also not far enough out to really chase it and put the layout. Panemans puts up a big forehand. That lefty forehand is just a killer in this wind. They get a quick continuation. One more time backwards, but through the break side into the end zone. Both players underneath a wobble, second and third and fourth attempt, but the disc ends up on the ground. That is agonizing. It somehow just wouldn't come down for Belgium. One more chance for the Austrians. Still stuck deep in their end zone. Can they get it around the first cup? Can they show us some more of them deep shots? At the moment, this Belgian zone is really forcing Austria to stay in their own end zone and they get the short field turn they craved. Panemans, the lefty, has the flick wide open. Goes backwards, Hoffman now has it. <laughs> Another wobble disc into the end zone for Emma Desmet. Here's a break for Belgium. Second score of the day for Desmet on her birthday. So with this catch from Panamans, 
Is this just good focus, or did he intentionally do that to get the defender over committed the wrong way? Like, by the way, I would like to point out this is almost certainly not intentional. Because if it was, I mean, i come off it. But he just maybe got too far. Maybe he thought that actually he's not going to be able to catch it in bounds. So just get a hand on it and try and pop it up. Maybe a bit of Mac line practice coming into play. Who knows? Regardless, it's another Belgian break. And they're opening up a little bit of a gap now. 5-2 they lead. Yeah, the Belgian d defensive look really making it difficult. And we have seen in the previous games that it does make a difference. Uh, first of all, how well you've practiced playing against zone how many different zone types you have practiced against and how quickly you're able to adapt to the style of play of the opposing team. I'm just surprised. I never thought, you, I never thought I'd see you, you know, really explain the various benefits of zone. It doesn't sound like you as a player. <laughs> well, let me tell you this, kids. You can make it far with zone, with a good zone. 100% you can. Another proof of that is the opening game that we witnessed yesterday between U20 Poland women and U20 GB women. You can re-watch that at the WFDF YouTube channel where all the U20 action is happening. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on both Alti TV and WFDF YouTube channel not to miss any action this week coming from the Joint Junior Ultimate Championship. Bit of a miscommunication on the pool there. Austria not sure who should field it. And Falan couldn't reel it in so they're just again simple breakdown it's going to give Belgian the disc right on the end zone line there is a call here the players not giving us too many hand signals to work with Is there a gender ratio mismatch? Oh, could be, could be. That is always a fun one. <laughs> Especially if it's in the final of a European championship. Now, who would do such a thing? <laughs> so players are counting. Coaches and admins are getting involved. I'm just trying to do the maths out here on the field as well. You can do so as well. And it seems like there will be a repull. Well, that was unusual. Well, in any case, you have a chance to rewatch these videos anytime on demand, as well as rewind the stream. So feel free to go back and let us know in the comments what actually happened in that last point. Uh, let me see if I can if I can find one of the coaches and uh, and get the get the uh, get the down low on it. One more pull from Belgium. This time it lands deep, deep in the Austrian end zone, and it will be a good one. Hop for Visa. Gets the disc in the center. Furlan goes sideways to Hochmeier. And now they're slightly stuck in that coffin corner. They are going upwind after just going downwind. And here's a good look. Again, they do see the open players behind the first and second cut, but so does the Belgian defense as they move the other way. Despil gets off the sideline. Panemans. High release backhand into the hands of Despil. Despil. They keep working it quickly with a little give and go action. About a meter outside. And they put up a hammer over the defender. And that could have been an easy score and it will be. It goes to the middle, to the hands of Van Hulle. And that's another break for Belgium. What a pull it was after the repull from Belgium. Pinned Austria in deep again having to work with really tough field position. Belgium get the turn, and then that cheeky hammer over the top really lured the defender in and just couldn't bring it down, and then Panamans takes advantage, gets the, all the traffic going one way and just finds that soft spot at the front of the end zone for the goal to Van Hurler. 
I found out what happened with the repool, by the way. There you go, Benji. Enlighten us. So it didn't seem to be a gender mismatch, and that wasn't actually what happened. It was just a miscommunication about uh, uh, about the timings. So essentially, Belgium heard the three whistles and thought that meant they could just they were good to go. So they pulled it, but uh, actually they just still had to wait a little bit of time for the Austrians to signal that they were ready. I see. Interesting. You learn something new every day. It's so it's not very often you see uh, you see the disc pulled before one side's ready to go, but it can happen. And yeah, everything resolved uh, in good spirits. And uh, what a pull it was at the second time of asking as well for Belgium. The eager teenagers. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons as well that we see Belgium have a lot of success is that they've got a number of these uh, kind of showcase tournaments. Thinking about Tom's tourney in Bruges where we were earlier this year. Those in uh, those in Ghent, often uh, there's a lot of youth presence at G-Spot as well, in the Blarmis and out there, hosted by Gentle. So they're getting these players, these you know, experience of what it's like at big tournaments, nice and early. That's right. They can get enough of the exposure. Meister for Austria doesn't go through the break side. Instead, finds Justich in the middle. They continue to Schuster. Justich now again with the reset. Sideways to Brown. I'd quite like to see Austria maybe be a bit more aggressive with some of these downfield break side options, just like that. Dietrich now transitioning from a handler position to more active downfield cuts. This is a big throw. Brought down though by Austria, Rinneberger. I love that she checked whether to see that her opponent was all right as well. Austria slowly but steadily nearing the end zone. Meister. Which actually means master in German. Now that I did know. <laughs> but nowhere close to the Masters age. Big shot, incredible footwork by Austria. They bring the disc in and finally they score, add another one to the scoreboard. Schuster demonstrating the toe drag swag right there. Got it pinpointed, tiptoed right at the front of the end zone and really good field awareness there, tracking the disc, keeping that, uh, keeping that other foot up as well to make sure that you're not straddling the line. Brilliantly done that from Schuster. Good effort. I really, what I really enjoy about both these teams is that they seem to play excellent mixed ultimate. This is literally man to woman, woman to man. Like it, they seem to just cr throw cross gender throws all the time. I like that they've got these. That both sides have the big plays in them, coming from both, coming from coming from both genders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just got my got my words caught in my mouth there. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to see that uh, they've got trust in their teammates, whoever they are, the way it should be. So as the blue sky greets us at Pola Marshove, the wonderful complex and host of this joint junior ultimate championship, we get ready for another pull. The half being at eight points, so whichever team reaches eight point first will take the half, will win the half, and take us into a half time, which is about seven minutes long here. And this one, Paul was nearing the sideline, but lands out of bounds eventually. Sideline finally getting the hint of sitting down in front of us so that we can see well and actually name all their teammates. What's the opposite of name and shame? It's like <laughs> name and praise, I guess? I suppose. High disc, great collection, great effort. Eyes on the disc has gone back. Again, just checking to make sure that everyone's okay. I think that one was actually from uh, Van Lanka, but, and I think, sh yeah, some contact called the disc, taps back, tapped back into play. 
backwards and sideways to Fanquali. Good movement through the middle. Bonnie Dalla had the disc and found her teammate behind her. Nice snag by Ongenat. Ongenat. And but that time it just goes straight through the grasp of Van Quali. Now, this is an interesting development. A break chance for Austria. It'll be their first break of the game, I believe. Balinkas picks up. She rips a big forehand. She has a wide open receiver underneath. None other than Botstatsky. And here's a big backhand for the end zone, brought down, and that's a break for Austria. Gillian Kana with the score. Wow, that is some spice from the Austrians, and it must admit, it caught me off guard. It really caught me off guard. It really took just two, two throws, didn't it? Balinkas picked up, looked around, saw where the space was, put up a huge ripper of a forehand, and then they wasted no time and just risk who well we said i think there's a check saying here is me coming with the check sayings that are intransferable into english anyway but risk is gain is what we say because in czech it rhymes and it's risky as isk nice <laughs> like who dares wins exactly that yeah i like it just slightly better sounding <laughs> i mean it is to me but that's because uh, foreign languages I find always more interesting and enticing than your own. We do have a quite lovely display of different languages being spoken at this junior championship. And I'm just impressed how advanced these players are in English to be able to solve all these dis discussions so quickly and patiently. So far we've had wonderfully spirited games and you can tell that the junior coaches, not only they're always super nice and um, kind of friendly looking. They also obviously place a lot of emphasis on spirit of the game and teaching it to the juniors and introducing it as a significantly important part of our sport. So one of the first major tournaments I covered was the European Youth Tournament Championships out in Veenendaal in the Netherlands back in 2017. And there was uh, something that really that really stuck with me uh, long after that tournament. I'll uh, I'll fill you in on the details after this point. Panemans. Finds Kleiss. Kleiss slices it through the middle, but that was slightly behind the hands of Combe. And another break chance for Austria. Dietrich calls a timeout for her team, just like she has heard you and wanted you to finish your story, Benji. So. It's probably Monday or Tuesday, still relatively early on in this week. So a lot of the players probably aren't that familiar with themselves. This is back in 2017, uh, EYUC. And uh, I can't remember which team it was. Maybe someone on Slovenia, I think, celebrating a birthday. So they sing, you know, happy birthday in Slovenian out there on, you know, on their table. And there's a big cheer. And then the table next to them from a completely different country then sings happy birthday in their own language. And then kind of every table takes it in turns to sing happy <laughs> birthday in the various languages. And I just thought it was such a lovely gesture that really typified what these sort of events are all about. So as we have some highlights to show you during this timeout, we're going to take a short break in our commentary booth ourselves. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a f <laughs> football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe wow. just that boost of energy they needed. out of the timeout is Team Austria with their second chance to break. 
against Belgium, who are still up 6-4 over them. Their zone proving quite effective so far against this Austrian offense. We have Dietrich and Meister leading the handler offense for Austria. They also have Schuster back there. But this time it will be Lili Renneberger who's on the far sideline, goes for the great break. That is Fischer collecting and returning the disc to her hands. And a slight overthrow on that sideways pass. Belgium back with the disc. Austria so far unable to convert that break chance. It's one of the aims of the zone, just force a high quantity of passes and in this weather, trust that you're gonna get the turnover. Here's Panemans. Gets the disc again. He's got that lefty laser ready. He puts it in front of the end zone and I think two players did not communicate well. Who's, uh, who was meant to catch the disc first? Great layout effort there on Meister. Yeah, they just got in each other's way. And that time, just, just that split second to use your voice, just make your presence <laughs> felt, can really make a difference. I think it just might be too many things at once. Too much to ask. Schuster returns the disc. Meister back to Schuster, who <laughs> tumbles, gets on his heels. They keep working around the zone. Here is Rinneberger. Very patient at the moment from Austria, but they're just going laterally. Doesn't feel like they're attacking this zone anymore. Austria again on this near sideline, really not gaining mu many meters. It's all horizontal. There's nothing vertical about the offense at the moment. The downfield really not providing any options. Here is Bannemans with the D. Goes with a <laughs> casual push pass into the end zone. And despite the layout efforts for the catch, the disc is back with the Austrians. I understand what the players are doing downfield. They're trying to stretch it out and uh, pull the defenders away. But that only works if you actually activate your handlers and they not only move horizontally, but also try to attack the downfield space, which has not unfortunately been the case for Austria. It feels a little bit like there's two different units, two different teams out there for <laughs> Austria, rather than all working as one. And a big layout comes flying through again for Belgium. Who's that figure in the bucket hat? Is that Pisano? You know what? I, it might be. And here is Panamans looking for an open up line cut. Everyone's coming to that front corner of the end zone. Oh, and they jam it in the jam hole. Good pressure on the catch but Belgians bring it in regardless one more point for Belgium and they will come out of this half victorious yeah there's that flying layout block from as you correctly called Pisano and then this was uh Maybe not quite textbook end zone offense. Everyone seems keen to get it right in front of Panamans. But they do just about get it past the defender and into Hoffman's hands. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 7-4 currently the score in this mixed matchup. I think this is the half time point cap. So we're going to take half at seven, which is now. That just means that we will have a little bit of a break. S about seven minutes uh, is when the stream continues. Once more, the teams will resort to shade to enjoy the cheers from their friends and family and fans cheering on the sideline. Lots of t-shirts saying Belgian supporters. But if you are a fan of Austria, you will be looking forward to them making 
a different game out of this in the second half. And as we leave you with some highlights, we're going to take a break in the commentary booth ourselves. Checking out. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
Welcome to the second half of action. We have a U20, U17. U17. <laughs> this is going to happen a lot. U17, right, U17 mixed action. Belgium taking on Austria. It's been a fun game to watch. Both teams bringing us a lot of highlights, which we are and which we have been replaying during the halftime show. And uh, they do have a lot of younger fans out of their U17 women's side who are currently gathered around the screen, which is showing the stream uh, here at the fields. So just having fun, stream so good you watch them live on the pitch. Why would you? Why would you need to watch the frisbee when you can? watch the frisbee on a screen because it's closer to us Benji they can feel our positive aura this is where I would go on a rant about the generation below me being you know attached to screens yes well but I've I, had but, to set limits but, on screen time yeah, myself. I, re I realize that's <laughs> extremely rich coming from me so uh, yeah I didn't go there <laughs> but who cannot scroll currently through social media are these two teams that are getting ready to open up the second half Belgium took the half at seven over Austria with four points. But we have seen breaks from both sides, so anything is possible. Yeah, those of you thinking that, I thought it was games to 15, why isn't a half at eight? Well, in these 18-minute games, half time, there is a half-time point cap at 40 minutes, so we finished the point. Uh, Belgium had six at that point, so we had a half-time point cap at seven. And underway is Anjanat going backwards to Frutongen. Oh, and that is an overthrow on a dump pass. Austria with a chance to break early in the second half. Yeah, had her head in her hands, frustrated that she let that one go. Hochmeier thinks about picking up the disc, but it won't be him. Instead, Palingas puts up a forehand shot and a bit of a ghost D, I think. The receiver couldn't quite see the disc through the defender, striking through its trajectory. One more chance for Belgium. They go to the middle. Vanesta, big throw, saved by Andrian. Just how they drew it up, maybe. And here's an upline shot that is a bit too far. Palinkas picking up. Got a tube, oh, maybe not walking away now. Got a tube grip on her right knee, which under 17s slightly worrying. Hopefully it's nothing too major. She's just covering that dirty tattoo. Here is the Austrians with a score and a first break to open up the second half. That's exactly what they needed. You let Belgium go 8-4 up with time ticking away, just over 20 minutes left in this game with an 18 minute time cap. You feel like, is it too much to do? But getting a break here to begin this half, you're only two points behind now. Austria are right in this contest, Rachel. I don't think they could have asked for a much better start for the second half. Uh, Belgians struggling. Well, were they struggling against the wind? There hasn't been much wind after the half, but uh, clearly coming up with a good uh, defensive setup. Just, just a, a lot of pressure on every throw, it mm. felt like. Exactly. We saw they had, uh, as well as the two turnovers they generated, they did, uh, Belgium were able to rescue a disc that was tipped as well. So, uh, yeah, clearly they're causing problems. I think what they were um, forcing was that they try to get the disc on the sideline and then really fo focus on taking away both the resets and the in-cut options, knowing that Belgium might not decide on a deep forehand shot when stuck on that near sideline. So keeping it tight is Austria, but can they do it again? We've had some confusion earlier in the game about signaling the preparation for readiness to receive the pull. But that time it was Austria receiving. This time it will be Belgium. 
Yeah, both sides lost their first games this morning. So really keen to bounce back here and get their first win on the board. Panquali finds a wide open receiver in the middle. Carney for the up line. Big backhand into the end zone. It's hanging. Both players underneath and defense comes down with it. Austria with a second chance to break. They don't take the deep option straight away. Uh, but go for the upline instead. But they take it on the second chance, and that's a thing of beauty. It lands exactly in the hands of Nils Brown. He continues into the end zone. The positioning is there, and second break for Austria. Fisher with the score. And an emphatic slap of the disc to the ground. He's excited. Austria bang in this. Belgium got some good flow going in on the deep shot. Daria Sheruga did exactly the right thing and went up and rather than just knocking it away, brought the disc down, partly because it meant that there's no way the, the uh, Belgians can get any second chances, but also because it got their offense going nice and quickly. This really opened things up here, this deep shot to Brown and then the continuation. He puts this one out there for Fischer. Van Quali tries to come around but can't do so. And Austria are only one point behind now. Whatever the coaches said at half time, it's worked. It's really worked. And that's what we like to see. Some nice, exciting, tight matchups here at Joint Junior Ultimate Championships as the teams go into their first timeout of the second half. We will take you, uh, we will take a short break and leave you with a little word from our sponsors. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, now, team. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Ulti TV bringing you the best streaming content out of the Joint Junior Ultimate Championship. My name is Rachel Toshnerova and I am here with Benjamin Race for some more action from the U17 mixed game Belgium uh, against Austria. Yeah, Belgium were up 7-4 at half and receiving to begin the second period, but Austria have broken twice to come back within one point here. I think partly, yes, they're getting good pressure defensively, but also offensively, they've opened up the game plan a little bit more. They're being more expansive in their looks and before where they were playing everything short and giving Belgium a lot of short, short fields, this time it really feels like they're playing without fear. Gender pulling being employed by Austria. This one unfortunately landing out of bounds from Furlan, but where else to practice than a junior championship? Belgians open up with a big undercut and now swinging through the middle. Seems like the Austrian are forcing the middle. Despil looking for options, goes for the lefty backhand Cheeky through the break site, Marcelis. I like it. Saved, not the intended receiver, but still counts. Belgium keep possession, Fres. Backwards to Molion. The spill has it again, but a call stops the play. Yeah, everything's very congested in the middle there. It would not surprise me if there was a pick. Just need to get that spacing sorted out, give each other room to work with. The spill 
Cheeky push pass. I was going to say, I love it. She's showing off some creative throws there. She is a lefty to add to the mix. And here is a nice dump and swing continuation into the end zone for Belgium. And they stop the Austrian break streak and bring this one in. What a time to find a clean hold there. Just looking very chilled, playing it short, dinking and dunking their way down the field. There was one slightly high throw that was caught by the unintended receiver. And then just playing it short, taking those options and really attacking that break side. The timing of those continuation cuts is really well done because they're not coming so early that you've got players and thus defenders in that space. They're coming late enough that you can lead them into the space there rather than trying to spear the disc at your receiver. Just put it out and let them chase it down. Like we said, dump and swing can work wonders if you know how to do it properly. If you don't, just chuck it deep. But Hoffman... That tracks, yeah. <laughs> but Hoffman with the score for Belgium, taking them to the eight-point count on the scoreboard. Yeah, a little over 10 minutes left in this game. Time cap comes on at 80 minutes. So when that 80 minute, so when the 80-minute hooter goes, you finish the point, add one to the highest score, and that becomes your new score cap. Only five teams in the U17 mixed division. Besides Belgium and Austria, we also have Italy, Hungary, and the home nation of Poland. One more poll for Austria, Meister. She's been incredible for this Austrian team, getting every second disc. Could you say masterful? <laughs> Dietrich. Right there with her. I was quite happy with that one. Justich back to Meister. Meister fakes big. Sporting the blonde braids. Quite a lot of cute braids on both male and female matching players, but that one is knocked down. Could that be Pisano again? He's been a beast on defense for Belgium. Yeah, he's not he's not the tallest or you know broadest of players, but he really gets around. He covers ground so quickly. Despil has it. Goes to Panemans and a continuation into the end zone for I think Van Hula. Van Hula once more. I think we've been saying his name quite a few times in this game already. Excellent stuff. Belgians take a break right back. So, what well, I think something that we've seen in this game is teams using timeouts and using breaks effectively. Austria came out really strongly after half time, you know, f clearly felt like they'd address some things in the game plan. And then Belgium, getting broken twice to start the half, aren't happy with that, take a timeout of their own, and then march down the field cleanly, put it in, and then generate a turn, and then capitalize on that as well, clinically finding their way into the end zone. So, both. I think, actually, you have to credit both coaching staffs here for finding ways to get the best out of their players. Sounds about right. Like we said, only five teams in this category give a lot of room for improvement. The, there will be rematches for these teams throughout the week. So good to really build upon each game and make sure your players are familiar with the opponent. Here is another, I was going to say out of bounds and I was going to be right. But this time it was very, very close once more. Podstatsky to pick up for Austria. Furlan and Hochmeier. There with her in bounds is Paula Santner. But the disc is with Belgium. Big fakes. Morleon. Forehand laser from Desmet, the birthday girl. Lefty forehand through the break side, all the way into the end zone. And this time, Panemans on the receiving end. 
The turnover comes there because that throw from Austria isn't as precise as it as it really needs to be. It hangs there a little bit, and Falan is a the slightly shorter receiver there, which I, I totally sympathise with. Can't necessarily go up and attack that as easily. It allows the Belgian defender, who absolutely comes charging through, and then again Belgium working it cleanly into the end zone. Let's see the point one more time on the replay. A filthy steal there from Morlion. Really turned on the Jets. And then it's tipped as well, but got it out far enough that it could only be tipped. And still making the catch in the end zone, the Belgians. Three on the spin for them now. They were they were just one point up after Austria started this half strongly. And now Belgium up 10-6. Seem like they're cruising. Quite unfortunate for Austria. They worked so hard and uh, really enter the second half and with lots of energy, scoring two breaks in a row. But the Belgium waste no time and they get them right back. Austria getting ready to receive. You get the feeling if they are to mount a comeback in this game, they could really do with putting this one in. Agreed. Arms up. Ready for the pull. And one more time, the brick will be the starting point for the next point. Fridolin Justich. Love the first name, by the way. Great choice, parents, if you're watching. What, what's the first name? Fridolin. <laughs> He's got the disc again. Here's Dietrich. Don't, don't usually see many Fridolins. That's right. Certainly not in the UK. <laughs> I think that's a, it's, it's like an old school. Oh, and a wobble on the disc. Austria loses the disc once more. Given how Belgian have looked since they took that time out, I'm not sure you'd bet against them scoring again here. Van Kuali, big forehand shot all the way into the end zone, and that's his score. Another break. Onkenat makes makes sure that that one doesn't slip away, and that's a third break for Belgium in the second half. I'm sure we've all heard coaches talk about how you don't go for those same hard same third hucks because they're risky you don't get a much don't get much margin for error you've really got to nail it unless you know how to do them well and here is yeah fun fun quality. Quality. absolutely nails this one well in fairness we could have said that uh Onkenat was sort of starting his cut from the second third so maybe not the same third yeah and uh it was right on the line there it's tricky <laughs> there as well because Kleiss has drawn his defender into that space as well. And I thought it was very close to just getting a hand on it, but got it over them into the end zone. Belgium up 11-6, forcing Austria to call a timeout. Their first of this second half. So, as you can see, the timeout is almost over in this Belgium-Austria game. Austria making a strong entrance into the second half, scoring two breaks in a row. But Belgium responds, respond even stronger, scoring three breaks in a row. And we are past... No, we're not past the time limit. We're nearly there. Nearly 80 there. minutes of the time limits for this game or 15 point cap, which uh, we're not going to reach at this stage. The under 17 mix, second game 
of the week for both of these sides, both losing their games this morning. Belgium going down to Hungary and Austria losing to Poland. But these two teams will match up again. There's only five teams in the pool, as long as the f as well as the four I've mentioned. There's Italy as well, and there's a double round robin, so you play each other team twice. The the other games haven't been decided yet. The order of those games is determined after the first round is over. Basically, I think to ensure that you don't get the side play, you don't get the second game of against an opponent, and then go straight into the final and face them a third time. But the top two teams from the uh, double round robin will play the will play the gold medal match, and the third and fourth place teams will play the bronze medal match. Now this is a huge pull uh, from Despil. Lovely. Lovely exhibition of great women's pulls, even in the junior category. And Austria find themselves on offense one more time. Hochmeyer was a bit stuck on options, but they do get it off. Their success at the start of this half was partly propelled by a propensity to put it deep. <laughs> I wonder if they go back to it. Fakes the overhead, opens up the space with the fake. But here is Hoffmann to the rescue for Belgium. He gets the D. Yeah, floated that one out there for Wortinger, but always losing the physicality match up there. Dispil opens up for Belgium, gets the disc again. Quite a lot of lefties out of Belgium. Desmet overthrows her teammate. One more chance, Furlan for Austria. At least Austria are finding ways to get the disc back now after they turn it. Podstatsky finds Furlan one more time. Given that she is representing Austria, we would say that she might be the child of Odi Furlan. The president of the EUF. Hochmeister. Oh, my. <laughs> mixed up those two names together. A little bit of a fusion there. <laughs> but Stadsky. Again, that Belgian zone that was causing Austria so much trouble at the start of the game. They slice it through, but denied by the hands of Van Hulle. He's been a scoring machine for this Belgian squad. Bannemans wastes no time. Continues for the upline, gets it from Van Hulle. And they jump it into the end zone. The simplest of simple pops, but maybe too simple. A travel called on Panemans. He will have to take the disc back. Tapped into play. They go a bit backwards to Fres. Oh, and here's the laser shot into the end zone. Panemans one more time on the receiving end. Second goal of the game for him. And one more break for Belgium. Yeah, 12-6 now. This game, you feel, is done and dusted. But if you're Austria, you know, you've still got to keep plugging away out there because you can build some momentum into the next game, even if you can't come back here. And who knows? As long as Belgium have to score that final point, it's still open still up for grabs so we've hit the time limit now you said it was 80 minutes for the under 17 division what happens next so you finish the point add one to the highest score and that becomes the new score cap i'm going to double check exactly when the cap went on so i think we are in that situation now so we've got game to 13. and in the meantime i'm going to describe this nice belgian uh, flag carried out uh, with some M&M's characters on it uh, I'm on the sideline. I must admit, I'm not quite seeing the connection there between Belgium and... M&M's? Yeah. Could be a club team or something. The funny part is that it says, we are all red, which is exactly what's going to be proving to be true later on in the week with this level of sun. Right, certainly very much get the suntan lotion at the ready because otherwise you are going to go very burned. And as we have some questions in the chat regarding the upcoming games, we would like to let you know where you can find the potential schedule as well as the streaming schedule. 
you can find uh, all of the all of the games on the website, which is jjuc.sport. Just make sure to scroll all the way down where it says mobile, and there is the little um, department which says live score. So once you hit that, you'll be able to follow all the action if you're unable to put on YouTube. Uh, for example, when you're busy or just don't want to be looking at your phone all the time. One more pull for Austria. Meister rips a backhand deep. That one goes over the head of Bannemans. Really well judged by Fischer. Excellent piece of offense into the end zone. Sailed out of bounds. That's unfortunate. Loved that look. That was exactly the shot that Austria has been looking for all game long. Yeah, just wanted to sit it in that space for the player to run onto, but it just kept going. Belgium! And the Belgian sideline getting Belgium! really loud, almost disturbing Panemans on his catch. And Dietrich Dilea picks up Meistering. Me Meistering. Meister! Up line, big backhand into the end zone, but that one will be a bit too far. Again, it had the right float on it, making sure it doesn't go out of bounds. And given the loudness of the sideline, I think we might be playing until 13. I think we are, yeah. So, Panemans walking the disc slowly to the front of the end zone. Rips up a deep shot. There is a receiver underneath. Who's going to read it better? It will be the Austrian defense. Mia Meister. Goes to her friend Dietrich. Brown now has it. Meister again. They're now moving the disc a lot quicker, but yet again slowed down by that Belgian defense. It's kind of been the story of the game. The Austrian handlers working really hard, but not gaining enough meters or attacking the downfield space efficiently enough, which eventually almost always causes them to... Yeah, turn it over and give over, Belgium yeah. a short field as well. Bannemann. Yeah, wanted the throw and go there and popped it up, but it was brought down. Went really picking up. Belgian working against it. Just shy of the end zone. Quick dish for the forehand score. Belgium running on the line and judging by the excitement it seems like the game is over yeah hand slaps and high fives all round Belgium look like they're being put under pressure at one point Austria brought it back to 7-6 and then Belgium put in six on this bin and emerged 13-6 victors getting their first win of the tournament on the board lovely stuff from both teams the Belgian defense really proving deadly for Austria, but I think it doesn't take more than one coaching session to make this a completely different game once they face each other off once more. As we've heard, they're playing twice round robin in this U17 mixed category. It was a pleasure to host you. It was really fun to have so many of you watching online, more than 200 of you joining the live chat. My name is Rachel Doshnerova and I was joined by the lovely Benjamin Reese. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for some more action coming your way. Benji, what's the last game? We have the Patreon voted game for today, which is under 17. We'll be here and you be there too. Checking out for now. Multi.tv.